Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick. For months, sporting events at all levels have been put on hold, delayed or canceled with the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. The latest shoe to drop the Big Ten Conference this week, canceling football and all of its sports schedules for the fall, including conference championships and tournaments. The impact will be far reaching for college athletic departments and college communities who stand to lose millions of dollars as fans won't be visiting on game day weekends. With more on this week's announcement and the potential impact, I'm pleased as always to welcome to the show the Vice President and Director of Intercollegiate Athletics at Purdue University, Mike Bobinski. And uh, Mike, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Gary. It's a strange time, but I'm ha happy to have the opportunity. Yeah, very difficult uh, indeed. Uh, put in perspective, if you will, what this process has been like for you and the athletic department, uh, the folks who work in the department, but also the players in football and all of the sports impacted by this. Sure. You know, well, we're a community in the athletic world uh, that's used to structure. You know, we live in a very season-based, schedule-based environment. Uh, there, there's a lot that's known each and every year. And when that's taken away from you, as it, as it has been now since the middle of March, uh, it creates anxiety. So we've had a, a group of very anxious coaches, staff, student athletes uh, for a number of months now. Uh, during that same time though, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of the way they've, they've handled themselves. They have continued to work, they've continued to prepare. Our staff in particular uh, have put together any number of alternate strategies and protocols to try to find a way through here to be able to compete this fall. Uh, sadly, at the end of the day, that uh, we weren't able to fully execute and uh, see if those would be successful. Uh, but it has been, without a doubt, uh, one of the more challenging times, uh, the most challenging time in my in my working career in, in college athletics. Yeah, Mike, I know a number of factors went into the decision. In your view, how big of an issue was liability, venue liability, the possibility of, uh, of a COVID uh, outbreak or even a death uh, that would, would come about and the liability that would result in that? Was that a, a, a key in the decision-making process? Well, I think in every, every decision that you make uh, in our world these days, liability comes, comes into the equation at some level. Uh, you know, the reality is that college athletics, particularly the sport of football, always carries with it a degree of risk. Uh, we sadly have had concussion-related issues over many years. There have been paralyzed athletes. People get hurt. Thing, things happen. I think the reality of, of the risk equation right now in this circumstance is that we just simply don't know enough yet to be able to fairly evaluate the risk. And so I'm certain that, that uh, as, as the president's considered this and, uh, and weighed the advice of, of, of medical experts and advisors, that uh, evaluating the, the risk profile of what we were walking into was, was certainly part of it. Certainly the impact uh, of the Big Ten canceling its fall sports schedules will have a big economic impact. Economic uh, impact in communities, uh, college communities like uh, West Lafayette or Bloomington. Earlier this week, we talked with Joe Wade, the CEO of uh, Visit Lafayette, West Lafayette, and got her take on the impact. Just in direct dollar impacts, it's, it's very easy to say a, a home football game brings in two to three million dollars per home game for seven over 20 million and and different games bring in a lot more um, and then when you start to plug in all the rollover impact and you know it's, it's the waitresses making good tips and then they go out and do other spending and all of that i, I think notre dame uses more like 20 million per game impact on their community. So Mike, uh, obviously big impact in the community. In your athletic department, uh, major impact as well. You've got a lot of fixed costs that you have to deal with. Give us perspective. How significant is this economic financial impact going to be on the sports, the athletic department there? Well, it will be extreme and, uh, and and very real. For instance, uh, our, our main sources of revenue are all event and activity based. Other than pure philanthropy and, and, and donations that we receive uh, from John Purdue Club members, everything else is based on us holding events like football games, like basketball games, and all that spills off of that, whether it be ticket sales, whether it be media rights uh, payments from television agreements or sponsorships or concessions, it's all activity-based. And when you remove the activity, uh, our economic viability from a revenue perspective uh, walks right out the door with it. So uh, 
we are in very much a triage mode at this point, trying to figure out how we can trim expenses, trim costs in, in every conceivable way, uh, you know, look for pockets of, of, of reserve dollars or uncommitted funds that we may have somewhere to try to at least get us through to the other side here where, where activity re resumes. We also have launched a very aggressive fundraising campaign called More Than a Game, uh, really appealing to our fan base uh, to, to, to help us through what is like the most challenging time in our existence yeah. so that when this does clear, we can come out the other side as strong as we can possibly be and, and prepared to compete without having this become a multi-year problem. So the, the financial challenges are extreme. I feel terribly for, for the community and the impact that, that, that this will have on, on the community, but it's, it's felt here locally yeah. in, in our midst also. Yeah, Mike, do you anticipate that, that Purdue and other athletic departments uh, around the conference will need assistance, uh, a bridge uh, funding or financing from the conference or from other sources? Do you think that's, that's a likelihood? Yes, uh, I, I really do believe this, and I've, and I've shared this with President Daniels and our board of trustees uh, over the last couple of months as, as we knew this was a, a possibility, albeit one we hoped would not come to be, uh, that there really aren't enough levers that we can pull and adjustments we can make uh, to, to cover all the fixed costs that, that, that exist at this point. And that will be including having to make some very tough personnel and programmatic reductions here in the near term. Uh, there still will be a gap that we'll need some type of financing instrument to, to get us through this. And uh, where that will come from and how that will be structured is yet to be determined, but uh, it's almost a certainty that that will be necessary. All right, and I know decisions on basketball coming in the weeks ahead. Mike Babinski, the athletic director at Purdue University, really appreciate you taking the time to give us perspective on a very difficult situation. Uh, thanks for being here. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it very All much. Right.